INFJs have a reputation for being arguably the laziest of all the personality types. Carl Jung himself, who is the father of cognitive functions, said that INFJs risk being the most useless of men. Ouch! Welcome back to my series on INFJ struggles. Today's video is going to discuss INFJ laziness, where it comes from, how it manifests, itself in the life of the INFJ, and then finally some advice on how to overcome it. So the reason why INFJs are lazy is because of our first cognitive function, our introverted intuition, and our inferior function, our extroverted sensing. So introverted intuition is our way of taking in the world. It gathers bits and pieces of information from the world and then looks at everything in terms of how is all of this information um, related together. What does the sum of all this information mean? What does it indicate for me or for the future? So because introverted intuition is trying to relate all of this random information when it may or may not even fit together and then trying to use that information to tell the future which may or may not be accurate, introverted intuition is very subjective and risks being unrealistic and impractical and that's why Carl Jung said from an extroverted and rationalistic standpoint these types are the most useless of men. So extroverted sensing is the opposite of introverted intuition because it is focused on what is physically perceivable. So unlike introverted intuition, um, extroverted sensing is much more objective and concrete. So introverted intuition and extroverted sensing are opposite of each other. One feeds into the other like an hourglass. So if you're feeding more sand into the NI side, you're automatically taking away from the SE side and vice versa. If you're feeding more into the SE side, then you're automatically taking away from the NI side. So if you're having a hard time um, visualizing how NI and SE oppose one another, imagine that you're planning a part so introverted intuition, again, um, which is involved with gathering information and trying to foresee the future, um, introverted intuition will say, this is the day on which um, this party should happen. This is the time and, and hour at which it should happen. These are the decorations that would make sense for the party. But then extroverted sensing, which is involved with concrete information and how the situation actually is, will oppose um, the introverted intuition and say um, it would be great if the party was on this day, but all of the people that we're looking to invite are not available on that day. It would be great if we had the party at this time and hour, but the venue isn't open at those hours. It would be great if we could use these decorations, but we don't have the budget for it. So introverted intuition is great at planning and it's very decisive and it always looks to move forward and to um, make progress and to make things happen, but it can be blindsided by the actuality of a situation, whereas extroverted sensing is all about the actuality of um, a situation, but it can create a lot of barriers to moving forward with progress because it is uh, very detail oriented. So back to why this NI dominant SE inferior dynamic causes the INFJ to um, tend to be lazy. Well, it's not entirely accurate to say that INFJs are lazy. INFJs are incredibly hardworking and dedicated people, but I also think that this is the very reason why we are lazy, if that makes sense. Because we have NI, once we have pieced together enough information to paint this picture of what it is that we need to do, it manifests to us um, like a prophetic vision and we will be so compelled by it like this is what I need to do this is my destiny and then we will work tirelessly to bring that vision to fruition and there is nothing that can stop us we will persist against all odds to make it happen so when we are hard workers we are all in but then when we don't need to be working hard we compensate otherwise by being very idle so we give 100% or nothing at all and of course giving a hundred percent is exhausting so if we don't need 
need to be in that 100% mode, we're going to not try to exert ourselves and we're going to allow ourselves to just deflate and be sloths. We feel like when we exert ourselves or get started on anything, we have to finish it and we have to see it through to the end. And that's just way too much pressure. And we don't know if we have the energy to see things through to the end. And we don't want to start on something if we can't finish it because that's just like a waste of time and energy. So we just don't start. Like my husband thinks that I don't have a lot of hobbies and I lay around a lot. But for one, INFJs may not look like we're doing anything, but we're probably just in deep thought. And that is a lot of work, not physical work, but mental work. And then secondly, I look like I don't have a lot of hobbies or that I don't do a whole lot, but the few hobbies that I do have, I work extremely hard at and I don't complete them just casually, but I work on them passionately and wholeheartedly. And then even if I don't initiate a whole lot of activity, like I may just choose to lay in front of the TV all day instead of waking up and just deciding that um, I'm gonna paint this room a different color today. It takes me a while to decide if I want to do something, but whenever I have decided that I'm going to get started on something, I give 100% effort and I persist until it is done and it is done well. And I think that this is how we INFJs operate. If we're going to do something, we're going to do it to perfectionism or not at all. We are going to be thorough or we don't even begin. But then the problem comes when we start to grow weary of this all or nothing mentality. We start to get tired of being in the zero or 100 mode, so then we just default to zero and we just hap happily and helplessly stay there and we are essentially sucked into it. We know that giving 100% is exhausting, but we won't settle for giving less than that because that's not who we are. So then we decide we just aren't going to start anything at all. And this is essentially what the NITI loop is, when we just theorize about how things should go, how things could go, how things would go, but we never actually extrovert our ideas. Again, back to the analogy of the NISE hourglass and just allowing way more to flow into the NI side and neglecting the SE side. Sometimes we can be in zero mode all day and sometimes for good reason, like maybe we had a long hard week at work and it's the weekend now and we just want to decompress and do nothing the whole weekend, but sometimes we will want to go into zero mode just because we know that if we choose to do anything, even if it's just like getting started on dinner, we know that in theory getting dinner started is an easy task and it may require just a little bit of energy, but then what if something unexpected happens? Like we go to get dinner started, but then uh, we're missing one ingredient. So then we have to go to the store to get it, but then we're like, if we go to the store, then we might as well just check to see if we need um, toilet paper and laundry detergent and all of the household essentials so that we go through the house inventorying for what we need while we're at the store and then when we get in the car we're out of gas so then we got to get gas before we go to the store and then before we know it this one little task of getting dinner started has spiraled out of control and the one task has now turned into a million other tasks and we weren't prepared to spend that kind of energy so we're like Oh, just forget it. I just want to keep laying here. And even if it's the best case scenario, like we get up to go get dinner started and we have all of the ingredients and we could just make the dinner, what if something else comes up later? Like what if our family um, wants us to go over, but then we've already used the little bit of energy that we had on cooking and we don't have enough energy left to give to our family. Like our energy is very scarce and we feel like we need to save it for a rainy day because we don't have of it enough of it to go around. So then we want to just keep laying there. And then of course one bad habit feeds another and being lazy just begets more laziness. And before we know it, a month has gone by and we haven't done a single thing other than the bare minimum of going to work and coming home. Or for some INFJs who have a very severe case of this INFJ laziness, who don't even have a job, they may end up locked in their house for an entire month and haven't even so much as 
opened a window and then in very profound cases instead of just being in zero mode for days or weeks or months some INFJs can be in zero mode for their whole lives and they are actually what Carl Jung calls the most useless of men because um, they have this great an eye, but they're not going to do anything about it. They're not going to turn their an eye into SE, and they're just going to bury that an eye in their heads and never make anything of themselves. Laziness can be a struggle for the INFJ for sure, but the cure for laziness and the fear that getting started on anything physical will spiral out of control and that you'll be forced to expend yourself and the energy that you just don't have is I hope that this advice doesn't sound really impractical and just lukewarm but you have to practice conscientiousness and mindfully centering yourself. So what I mean by this is INFJs often feel really turbulent and we often feel like we don't have control over anything, not even ourselves. We feel like the world is chaotic and out of control, so we really shy away from the world and shy away from putting ourselves out there. And if you're just hiding away all the time, you're gonna get lazy. And especially because INFJs have a rich inner world and we can get lost in our thoughts for hours and hours and not feel any need to get any external stimulation, we are more prone to laziness than the average person and susceptible to this bad habit of laziness. So that being said, we have to put in more effort and more mindfulness than the average person in order to avoid going down this rabbit hole of laziness, this rabbit hole of the NITI loop, this rabbit hole of procrastination and lack of motivation. INFJs need to practice centering themselves. Back to you talking about that metaphor of the NISE hourglass and how one feeds into the other and how if you're pouring more into the NI glass, you're taking away from the SE side and vice versa. Center your hourglass and balance your hourglass. Of course we are INFJs and we are going to default to pouring a little bit more into our NI side because that's who we are, but be conscientious about when you're tilting too much to your NI side and be mindful to occasionally rebalance so that your SE is getting a little bit too. And once you start committing to practicing this, you will start to feel like you do have some control and the world may be turbulent and chaotic, but you do have the power to control your life and your actions and your mindset. This can look like if you notice that you've been laying around for an hour, make the conscientious decision to go load the dishwasher or go do a load of laundry. If you don't feel like getting up off the sofa, do something from the sofa, like log into your bank account app and pay a bill. Or you can even say that you're going to journal for 15 minutes and get those thoughts out of your head and onto paper. Sometimes when you're in that INFJ laziness mode, aiming to do something productive like paying a bill um, or doing the dishes is beneficial because for one, you're mindfully using your SE and then you're also doing something necessary at the same time. So you're killing two birds with one stone, but rebalancing yourself and pouring some excess out of your NI um, glass into your N SE glass doesn't have to be something productive. It just has to be something that gets you a little out of your head and into the physical world. And journaling is a good activity for that because you're still in your mind and sifting through those thoughts, but you're pulling them out now and they're not just like evaporating thoughts in your head. It is imperative to be kind to yourself and when you're just not feeling it, you should allow yourself to just lay around and not put any pressure on yourself to do anything and you could just relax. That's absolutely okay, but at some point you have to remember that you are an INFJ and we are prone to falling into a loop of not wanting to do anything and then you almost kind of become gluttonous about not doing anything. You can overindulge in laying around. And then what started out as this innocent 
being kind to yourself and allowing yourself to just lay around becomes this unhealthy addiction to true laziness um, and not wanting to own up to anything or take any action even when it's very necessary or when left unaddressed for years INFJs can become for lack of better term a a bum. So center yourself, center your NISE hourglass, be mindful about when you allow yourself to indulge in laziness versus when you need to make the conscientious decision to force yourself to do something. When you practice mindfulness and conscientiousness, you will be able to determine when you can afford to be lazy, but also know when there are things that can be done and should be done and you don't psych yourself out mentally like what if I get this thing started and then this gets in my way or that gets in my way when you practice mindfulness and conscientiousness you start gaining control of your mindset and knowing that you can control your mindset to bring yourself to do things it'll help you start to feel like if you can control your mindset maybe you're not completely helpless and maybe you can control and a accomplish a few things in the physical world as well and you don't have to be so afraid to put yourself out there and even if something comes at you you have the mindfulness and the conscientiousness and the skills to hone your energy to address this thing Hopefully this video was able to help shed some light on why INFJs tend to be lazy. If you're related to this video, then please let me know in the comments because my favorite thing is hearing from you guys. So you guys are so awesome. I will see you in my next video.